Hey boss, uh, it is a pleasure to be here this evening and I thank the organisers uh, for bringing us together in what is an excellent demonstration of uh, democracy in action. Uh, as well as the councillors that have been acknowledged here tonight, I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, Animal Justice uh, Party candidate uh, in the Albert Park uh, uh, electorate, uh, Thames and Ramsay, uh, and uh, my friends and the Greens colleagues, um, the Greens candidate for Brighton, Catherine Copsey, and also the Greens candidate for the federal seat of McNamara, Stephanie hodgins May. I also thank my colleagues for sitting alongside me today. Nominating to represent your community is a significant commitment. And while our policy perspectives may differ, I thank you for your courage to put yourselves forward. Like those before me, I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. They have a unique relationship with the land and water, and, the right, and their rights uh, and obligations as custodians must be respected and, and thought about in planning of our city. As you may know, transport is something that I've been incredibly passionate about uh, during my time as a councillor. And I look forward to tonight's discussions and questions from the audience. My name is Ogi Simic. I've been a portfolio councillor for about two years. I live in St Kilda with my partner and seven-month-old son, Otis. I travelled to Australia via Serbia and Germany, where we lived for almost four years, after civil war erupted in my hometown of Sarajevo. For most of my young years, we lived in social housing. I share this part of my life because it's had an impact on the rest of my life, why I joined Greens politics, and why I'm a passionate advocate for public and active transport. At a young age, I had the opportunity to experience what good public transport looks like in Germany and cycling to school. And we relied on walking and cycling as a way to get around when we didn't have a car. These days, I catch public transport as my main form of transport. I'm a commuter cyclist. Uh, I love to walk and walk every day with my son Otis uh, and to as many meetings in the electorate as I possibly can. And that's not to say that I don't drive to get to the farm, for example, uh, and do deliveries for our small business. Having lived in the area, a lot of the issues that people raise I've experienced firsthand, whatever, whether it's dangerous, uh, pedestrian crossings, uh, overcrowding on trains and trams, not enough services on the 109, uh, unsafe cycling. I think that we're facing a big challenge, both here in Albert Park and across Victoria. We are at a critical jun juncture. Current population is projected to grow by 23% by 2018. And as the Mayor said in her opening remarks, this equates to approximately seven new people each day. While growing population, uh, Melbourne will be bigger than Sydney in, uh, by 2031. It is clear that we need some drastic visionary action to make our, up for chronic underinvestment in public tra transport infrastructure over recent decades if we are to minimise congestion and overcrowding and retain livability in Albert Park and Greater Melbourne. This will require cross-party cooperation that has been solely lacking in recent years. A growing city with road network that is at capacity cannot be increased, it requires a rethink of how more sustainable modes can be used. We must move beyond a business as usual approach and embrace innovation in our transport mix. This means deprioritizing massive freeways and toll roads over public transport. And borrowing from countries like the Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, where investment in public transport and cycling has drastically reduced the, the commuter time frames uh, and improved air pollution and health outcomes. Over recent weeks, I, had the I was fortunate enough to experience a world-class rail network in Japan, where trains traveling at 320 kilometers an hour connecting regional towns and major cities with precision timing, minimise pollution, pollution and maximise comfort. In Japan, I caught myself shaking my head uh, if I was forced to wait five minutes or longer uh, for a train. I travelled from Osaka to Hakone, the same distance, similar distance as Adelaide to Melbourne in about 3.5 hours, that's city to city. Just take a moment to imagine being able to avoid the expensive airport commute avoid wrestling your suitcase to get your luggage under the limit, and instead being able to jump on board a fast train to Adelaide or Sydney and arrive within hours. Japan didn't start planning the infrastructure when their population reached 127 million. They started decades ago. These types of projects shouldn't be pipe dreams. 
They are achievable when our state and federal politicians look beyond the election cycle and commit to working in the public's interest to bring our transport system into the 21st century. The Greens believe that we need, to, that we need a statewide integrated transport system in Victoria to respond to growing population. We want to develop a transport super agency to take responsibility for Victoria's transport system. This agency would develop a long-term transport plan for our state and establish a local transport group to engage in meaningful consultation with local communities on local transport problems. We need to turn our train system into high-frequency modern metro with high-capacity signalling, high-capacity uh, trains as well as new lines. Our trams need to be upgraded with greater separation and upgraded tram stops. Buses routes made more direct and frequently increased. The current government made a start with Metro 2 and the Dandenong line, but that approach needs to be rolled out across the network. Only through meaningful consultation with our communities and a genuine commitment towards a statewide integrated transport system will we avoid a continued lurch towards more toll roads and companies like Transurban making huge profits by slogging Victorians twice for the roads that they pay taxes to build. Fisherman's Bend is Australia's largest urban renewal project and will play a critical role in supporting population growth in central Melbourne. It is expected to accommodate 80,000 residents and jobs by 2050, right here in our backyard. There is no infrastructure project at the moment which excites me more than Fisherman's Bend, because if we get it right, we have the opportunity to be world leaders uh, when it comes to creating a city that is connected, walkable and livable. In order to achieve this, we need budget commitment for a train line into Fisherman's Bend. The draft Fisherman's Bend framework also proposes two potential rail solutions, and it is critical that we start planning for those now. That's why the Greens have announced our policy to start planning for Metro 2 project immediately which will stop in Fisherman's Bend and connect Fisherman's Bend with the rest of the state. Across Albert Park, we need important, importantly, uh, what we need importantly uh, is more services both in peak and off-peak weekends. Almost all our train lines and tram lines are overcrowded during peak hours and the wait between our services, 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes is simply unacceptable for an inner city. We need investment in cycling and walking major investment. This is cost-effective, low-hanging fruit, like separated bike lanes along St Kilda Road, safer pedestrian crossings. Any discussion of transport in our state cannot ignore the large and growing source of emissions in the transport sector. Transport is the third largest source of Australia's greenhouse emissions and made up for 18% of Australia's greenhouse gases in 2015. Road transport makes up for a whopping 85% of all transport emissions. When considering these figures, electric vehicles uptake is a no-brainer. And we recently introduced a plan to bring more clean cars to, um, to the market and making them more affordable for all. I look forward to our discussion tonight and the questions asked by the community. Thank you for coming.